Isso é a varinha da bruxa? Ou é a vassoura? Hey, mister, can we talk? Sorry. Sorry. I... You just want to get out of here. And you likely don't want to tag along like me. It's just... Mr. Thompson has his own view on matters, on account of it's his job and, and what all, but that's not the only side of the tale. To Mr. Thompson, a person's a gear. It does its job quiet-like. If it squeaks or stutters, it gets replaced. The deserters are decent folk. I knew some of them before they left. Miss McDevitt? Oh, gosh, no. She was a real important person. A flavorist. Made all the food taste decent. She used to work up in the big office with Mr. Thompson. All I know is she left after her son died. The real big to do. I could hear them both yelling clear from my own place. Can't say as I know, I wasn't there. The sound carried, but not the words. If Mr. Thompson ain't of a mind to tell you his own self, you'd best ask Miss McDevitt if you can get out to her. Life's hard here, especially for them that don't fit in so well. We're one big Spacer's Choice family, but every family's got the one the rest whisper about. Mr. Thompson's aiming to take away their power. They'll have no lights to see, nor heat to cook. They'll be at the mercy of marauders, or worse. I think you should talk to the town's vicar about it. Max, his name is. Thanks, mister. I just think when you gotta make a decision that'll hurt somebody, it's best to think on the right and wrong of it. That's what my dad used to say anyways. And what? Não, caranguejo não. Eu queria geladinho, não geladinho aí não. Progress on that matter we discussed. Oh, Miss Holcomb, how rare to see you out, and with a complete stranger. Curious. This here's Vicar De Soto. He's always offering spiritual counsel to those that need it. Thank you for the kind assessment, Miss Holcomb. I admit I've been quite interested to make our outsider's acquaintance. Please get it. What would you like to discuss? Uh, what? I thought you would talk to him. You wanted to speak to me, Ms. Holcomb? Every time I've tried to engage you in conversation, you look at the floor, answer in single words, and slink away. I can't imagine what would be so grave as to drive her to my mission. What has Mr. Thompson asked you to do? them of safety from the marauders and wildlife. I can see why that troubles you. Miss Holcomb has a soft heart. Always has, if you believe the talk. They rejected the order of society and live beyond the walls so thoughtfully provided by our Spacer's Choice patrons. Does that strike you as a responsible life choice? 
Assuming your goal is to save as many as possible, then you should bring everyone together. Send the power to Edgewater and convince the deserters to return to the fort. Boy! Not if things are left to stand as they are. Not to put too fine a point on it, but your choice of wardrobe is not precisely common hereabouts. Also, you lack the distinctive worker gaze. Usually either a deadening behind the eyes, or in some rare cases, a wild-eyed frenzy, like a trapped animal. Pretty universal here. Except for Miss Holcomb, who for some reason doesn't seem to have much to say to me. Isn't that right? It's just... there's more to it all than numbers. Sorry. Oh, nothing could be further from the truth. I'm simply bemoaning the level of spiritual awareness in this town. No, I am not. Though there is something to your accusation. It is wrong for me to succumb to distress. I must double my efforts to elevate my flock. These are good, hard-working people here. They who are not satisfied with their work are satisfied with nothing. No. How about, um, work fortifies the spirit. True exhaustion awaits idle hands. What would you like to discuss? I think seus conselheiros vão se rever. Olha não vigar. Wonder if the plague's ever gonna pass. Just keep working. Hmm? Work fortifies the spirit. Another day at the cannery. Eu melhor de medicação de arma armadura. Oi? Como é que tá? Legal, e tu? Tudo bem também, né? Milé. Que saúde, né? O resto é que tá na É, é verdade. Science. But it still happens. Hey, that's. I mean, if you need it. Okay. Olha para nós. Que viagem é essa?
Ее вот там будет, да? I'm going. Be right there. No problem. I'll head over. Coming. Oh, he must. back yeah huh you mean about the mission being I know but Vicar says the universe is a machine and it runs by law real machines have gunked up oil scratches and worn bits you can tell they've seen handling been used by folks the machine Vicar sees is one that ain't never been run. It, it's not for people to live in. It's something on a museum shelf under glass. The Vicar's about the only soul in the veil who spends his time thinking on what is and ain't right. It's just that when he looks at me, I feel I disappoint him. Procura que é.
path. Um. Eu joguei a cara do Fallout, né? Tá doido, igual. Até a música lembra. Só faltou ter primeira vez foi. Ou oh, terceira.
even I just blew you again.
speed. Well... Looking for it ain't here. Move along. Armed strangers wandering into my camp for one. Some of my camp wandering out for another. You want to try standing outside in the heat, keeping your sights open for the next Marauder raid? No, I'm sorry. That was unworthy of me. Lady named Zoe went missing some nights ago. Just up and vanished without a trace. Now I'm pacing around wondering if Marauders got to her. It's not like Zoe to go wandering. Figured she might be out scavenging, but that ain't exactly her talent. Can't imagine where she's gone. Vale's a wide place. 
She could be anywhere. Appreciate it. Honest. I'll tell you what I can. Vex me. If she told anybody, they ain't telling me. I'd check her room, but I got yelled at for snooping once already. Little ways ago, she was always obsessing over her serial dramas. Wanted to see what the fuss was about. Could be. Dangers are plenty out there. No telling why marauders would steal somebody like Zoe. Got no useful skill as far as I could tell. Well, enough to know we never got on. Zoe and Stefan were close. If anybody knows the workings of her mind, he does. She was lazy and thoughtless, but she's still one of our own. What is it? What is it? Over in the hothouse, tending crop. <laughs> Ali up there. If you're hungry, there's meat turning on the spit outside. If you're bearing illness, find a place to lay your head down and I'll fetch you a poultice. Whatever your troubles with Edgewater, leave them at the gates and be welcomed here. Any questions, dear? Suppose that weighs on who's asking. My flock likes to call me grandmother on account of my providing hot soup and free advice. You can call me Adelaide, though. Excuse me, Miss McDevitt? Sorry, it's just... You got such pretty trees in here. Why, thank you. You're Robert's girl, aren't you? I remember when you were but a sprout. Thomas speaks of you often. Are you staying long? You should try some of my tobaccorn tea. I brew it in an old spittoon, but it's been cleaned. Home for anyone who's ever turned their backs on Edgewater. A home for those of us with nowhere left to go and nothing to lose. So, like the spores of the puffball cast on the wind and alighting on fresh soil, we put down new roots. It is an unpleasant story, dear. But the short of it is that sometimes one wakes up and realizes the place that was once her home for much of her life has changed. The home in which we spent our lives has left us behind, and so we must move on. And that is as much as I will say on the subject. Here on behalf of that. 
cold-eyed reptile? Let's hear it. What's Reed's idea of peace, then? Amends. Spare me. Only thing Reed knows how to make is a mess. Like everything else that comes out of Edgewater, that peace offering is canned. I and my own are living just fine out here by ourselves. He would do such a thing. Question is, why would you agree to his plans? Canneries got a regulator. You want ship parts, you ought to rip them out of the canneries' guts and leave us be. If you're going down to the plant, you should divert power away from Edgewater and toward our end of the grid. Think about it. You'd be liberating an entire town from a lifetime of service to that odious cannery. Seems the sort of thing a hero would do. You've seen that miserable excuse for a town with your own lamps. Hollowed out workers laboring their lives away at the cannery, living off whatever scrap spacer's choice throws them. You know that's true, don't you, Ms. Holcomb? Your father died of overwork. His heart gave out. He, he was tired all the time, sure, but he was old, ma'am, and he raised me all by his lonesome. Look what they did to this child. Lost her family to the company, and still she defends them. I trust you will listen to your conscience. Watch out for she listens to your work. 